Good morning, traders. It's Tuesday, May the 3rd. Taking a look at the charts, we got the SPY or the SP500 uh, index fund here, and it shows uh, this is the daily chart. And where I think we're we're at is is entering one of these topping phases, which we've pretty much been anticipating for a while. Where you get the market rallies up, it gets topping, and then eventually it breaks down from that pattern. And we had another topping phase here, and I think we're entering another topping phase over here. And uh, overall, we've we've got a short-term cycle for stocks still pointing to the downside for a short term for another day or two, and then I think next later this week and next week we might see it bounce back up and continue to chop around in this topping phase before it breaks down and starts to test these lows and potentially break down and for the large caps to actually start a full bear market. Now, if we take a look, uh, just zoom in on the recent price action here. Yesterday we talked about it in the morning video. We kind of had uh, the market pull sell off on Friday, came down right into core pivot lows here, these pivot highs right through the middle of this p consolidation here. And of course it closed fairly strong on the day, giving us a, a, a reversal candle for the, the following day. And of course yesterday we saw more follow through. It came up to short term resistance, which is right underneath this peak here. And of course, right into the top of this, or sorry, this trough low and this peak high. So it came right into resistance, was short term overbought, and uh, we still have a downward cycle. So we're overall, we're seeing stocks trade lower again today, moving back down. We're going to probably see this choppiness and weakness for a couple more days before we start to see it, I think, uh, continue to have more of an upward bias and move up. Now, if we take a look at the cycles for the SP500, this is the SP500 futures yesterday. We had a nice bounce to the upside today. You can see we're trading back down pretty much right where we opened yesterday. And you can see, see this short term cycle. So uh, tomorrow goes to point that we are likely going to have some type of short term pivot low. So we might see the market sell off, put in some big lower uh, candle, a tail down here or bottom off. And then we could see about uh, a week long kind of bounce and rally in price into equities before we start uh, another a more significant move to the downside. Now, if we just go back to the overall market, uh, take a look at the IWM. We did have a, a spike down in the IWM there last night. And you can see the spike down in price right there. And of course, in overnight trading, oops, let me just move that cursor out of the way. You can see we had the spike down uh, right after the close yesterday. And of course, this morning we're seeing price already moved down. Futures have moved down to fill that, that spike. But overall, we're in that type of market condition where price spikes aren't going to be super accurate right now. Um, some, obviously, some of them will pan out like this, but we're in a very choppy kind of uh, market where the bulls and bears are struggling for control. There isn't a real um, strong bias, a trend moving up. The overall momentum in the market has kind of, uh, let's just go back to the, the daily chart here, and we'll just go to the SP500, the SPY. When we have a strong trend in place, I find the spike plays move very, very well, but now that we're in a topping phase where we're having the bulls and bears struggle I find that this is a time when spikes really are not quite as accurate. Once we start either another leg to the upside or we start the leg to the downside, once we get into a nice trending condition again, spike alerts so uh, kick into high gear and they should be very accurate once again. But right now it's just a struggle and very choppy price action uh, with lower accuracy going on. Now let's just jump over to what gold is doing. Here is the chart of gold. Uh, moving up again today, uh, miners are up slightly, I think, in pre-market. Gold is up, s uh, silver is down. You can see we're moving up this morning, uh, con continuing to uh, consolidate here. Now, overall, uh, it feels as though the market here, the gold market, has really broken into a new bull market. And breakouts in a bull market typ typically work out fairly well. So we've got uh, this big pattern here. It's been consolidating. You can argue how you want to draw that, but overall it's been in a consolidation phase. It's starting to break to the upside. And a lot of times in an early early stages or the first half of a bull market, when you get breakouts, you, you can jump on board and catch them because you can see a typical measured move. If we were to do a measured move on gold here, um, it would be fairly high where this next potential target would go. We'll take a safe level right here. We'll take a safe high level somewhere. We'll go right about here. And hey, where's that indicator? Let me grab this Fibonacci extension. Here we go. Low, up to this high, down to this low, 
and if we squish price down to see where that target is it's got an upside target around uh, 1404 now you can move these levels depending where you consider the market to have run to I've kind of got a target around 14 1396 somewhere I measured the other day but around the 1400 mark is the next potential upside run we could see this thing explode and continue to run up to that measured move and that's what this pattern is showing we've got a strong rally consolidation and we can see the second half of that rally which seems to be underway already and it could move up to there and of course if it does if we zoom back on the charts that is going to break some fairly significant uh, uh, pivot pivot uh, highs so we've broken kind of one here this is a, another standout pivot high which we have yet to break but we're very close to breaking and when you break two significant pivot highs, it's usually when the market has fully changed direction and the new bull market has started. So if we do get up to this 1400 mark, you can see we'll break another high, another significant pivot high over here. So we'll have a lot of upward momentum. And then, of course, gold could easily consolidate for a while before it starts the next uh, leg up. Now, taking a look at silver, let's just zoom into silver real quick. Here's silver. You can see it had a pretty good pullback yesterday. Trading um, a little bit lower again today, down a third of a percent. Uh, overall, I feel as though it's going to continue to consolidate. I do have an upside target here around the 1840, 1838, somewhere in there. Uh, if it tags that level, I think we'll see it go into another consolidation. And gold and silver, they, they're, they're both more or less in the same trends, but uh, just different timing. We saw gold more or less have a huge run up in January. And then, of course, we've seen it consolidate for a while, and it, now it's just starting to run up. Silver had uh, delayed kind of run up, it consolidated, and now it's had another big run up ahead of gold. I think we're going to see silver maybe consolidate uh, sooner than later while gold continues to move up, and then eventually silver will be the next kind of way to play the next leg higher in precious metals. Uh, we'll see what miners do. Miners could also be the next leg up. Uh, silver and miners seem to be running up in sync here uh, recently. Now, if we take a quick look at the gold cycles, this is the gold continuous contract cycle. You can see we've got um, we've got a little short-term uh, market top here. We're, we've got the cycles kind of starting to put in a little bit of a, a downward phase here. And a good example, this will show you on the on the on the uh, bond chart. But overall, gold's been holding up really well and because it's in a new bull market, instead of gold pulling back and selling off like we were kind of looking for uh, about a month or so ago, instead it's just held its ground. And as the, these cycles have bottomed and started to move up, we've seen gold continue to move up. And that's called cycle skew, which I talk about in my book, which you can download in the members area. Uh, but overall, looks like we're going to have another some more downward pressure in gold. But because we are in a bull market, we might not see so much down pressure. We might see just consolidate and chop around for a while until these cycles all bottom. And then we could just we just see this consolidate for a few weeks and then we see it start another run up. We'll see how things unfold going forward. But you, it's very clear that we are in a bull market for uh, gold and the downward cycles are nothing but pauses rather than pullbacks. And we're looking to buy near the bottoms of these. Uh, our focus going forward now will be to buy near the bottoms of these cycles to catch the next leg up in gold and silver and miners as they unfold. Now, if we take a look at TLT, which is the bonds, let me just kind of zoom out a little bit here. Here's the chart of bonds, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna zoom back a little bit more so we can see. But what's going on here is <clears throat> after we had a big run up in, in bonds, eventually we saw a big three wave correction to the downside. One, two, three. We saw the the market kind of top out up here. And then we the cycles and then we saw the cycles bottom out down here. And of course, this was after a huge run up in price. So we've seen we saw price actually move down in in that uh, during that downward cycle. Now, it looks as though we've been I've been very bullish on bonds for a while, expecting it to continue to explode to the upside for the first half of the, the bear market. We'll see how things unfold uh, with the financial situation. I think there could be a time when we really want to get out of bonds, but in the near term, I think there's lots of upside potential. And what we saw here were it looked like bonds were basing. So we had an upward cycle in price. Price moved up. And then as bonds went from a cycle top, we kind of had a couple little cycle tops here, all the way down to this cycle low, bonds actually held up above this, this 
spacing pattern down here. They actually they just traded sideways consolidating. And then, of course, when that major intermediate cycle bottomed and started to move up, we saw price rally again. And now we've kind of got the cycle high here and we've got this potential cycle low down over here. We might we're probably not going to see bonds collapse and drop and move down. I think we're going to see something very similar to what we saw over here, where bonds are just going to bounce around and underperform and trade down here until the stock market really uh, tops out and starts to uh, crash and, and break the, the previous lows from several months ago. And then we're going to see bonds, I think, start this next leg higher in price. So we've got the cycle skew showing in bonds. So gold and bonds seem to be the safe haven where price is moving up with the upside, upward swing in the cycles. And when the cycles are moving down, we just see those commodities or these asset classes trade sideways and consolidate until that kind of selling pressure, that momentum has stalled and turns back up. And then we see the next leg up. So overall, uh, from the looks of it, end of May, mid-May, we could see uh, bonds start the next run higher. And of course, that falls in line with what we're seeing with gold also taking a quick look at uh, let's go to crude oil really quickly here down one percent this morning short-term cycles uh, uh we'll show the like cycles in just a minute but more or less we're starting to see a pullback we are into some uh, pretty significant resistance levels you can see the volume by price these blue bars goes to show where there's been a lot of volume traded at that price and of course prices come up into that level and it's starting to pull back as key resistance. And of course, this is a lot of consolidation through here. So we still have a series of, uh, for crude oil, we still have a series of, um, oops, let me just grab a different tool. We've got a high, we've got a lower high. At this point, we're still at a lower high at resistance. We're still making lows and lower lows. So we could see this continue to pull back going forward and, uh, and and pull back down into the lower 30 30 zone and we'll see how things unfold with that going forward obviously a falling dollar should help support crude oil prices uh, but right now we're seeing a little bit of downward pressure in oil and I think it could uh, continue to kind of trade sideways here for a bit if we look at the cycle analysis for crude oil this is the continuous contract for crude oil you can see our pink line here our kind of intermediate cycle we're going to have a bit of a downward bias overall for the next uh, uh, more or less uh, two or three weeks here. In the near term, possibly tomorrow, the next day, we start to see the short term cycle kind of move up for a little bit of a bounce. And then uh, we could see it continue to have a little bit of weakness overall. I think it's going to trade sideways here and chop around. Uh, you can see and then uh, potentially uh, have a little bit more of a pullback in price. Now, we haven't seen the cycle skew yet in crude oil, meaning uh, is crude oil going to just trade sideways during this whole phase and during this downward move? Is, is it going to hold up or is it going to break down and actually sell off uh, before uh, uh, it hits a bottom here? So we'll see how things unfold going forward. It's more clear what's going on with gold and bonds, how they are holding up really well during downward cycles and uh, showing that they are in an, a new uptrend and they're holding up really well. So that's where we're at for now. Anyways, that's it for this morning. Take care. Bye-bye.